All right, the answer is E, it's not going to stop. We're never going to get to C because we're only expanding paths of length one, okay? So in here, C is the wrong answer and D is the wrong answer. We're only going to take paths of length one, okay? Let's do this. What about for, what about when the depth bound is two? We're only going to expect paths of length two. What happens? We did paths of length one, we did paths of length two. All right, we're going to stop there. We've got 105. Oh, we're still going fast. All right. And the answer is, oh, no. I think we'll do that. Right. E again. C's of length three. One, two, three to it. So we're not going to find it. Okay, again, it doesn't. E's the right answer. It doesn't stop. All right, it doesn't find. So it stops, but doesn't find a solution. What about when the bound is three? What's it going to do? It's going left, right. It's the same way it did before. It's going to always choose left before it turns right. That's my assumption in these graphs. All right, let's stop this. And it's going to find C. Yay. Right, it's going to find C. OK? Let's get going. What are the bounds for? What's it going to find? This is the bounds for. What's it going to find? It's going to do a depth first search of bound four. This is important for the next algorithm we're going to do. OK. Oh, no. It moves when I do it. Look, it moved. OK. Let's go back. Right, it's going to find C again. And what about when the bound is 5? It's going to search, do a depth first search of depth 5. What's it going to find first? Which nodes are it going to find? All right, let's stop that. Oh, no. Oh, I should do that in real time. Yeah, it's going to find D. That's much more fun in real time, isn't it? That's much better. Yeah, we'll do that next time. Yeah, good. It's going to find D. All right. So the question is, so effectively what we did by hand was this iterative deepening search. We're going to start with a bound of 0, so it's just going to check the path of things 0. Then we're going to do a bound of depth first search with bound b. If a solution's found, we're going to return that solution. Otherwise, we're going to increment b in and repeat. That's the algorithm that I effectively did by hand there. Yes? Hmm? Yeah, you guys can keep voting. Does that make sense? So this method finds the, the, will find the same first solution as which other method? Hmm? It's written there. This will find the same first solution as what other method? Right, this finds exactly the same solutions as breadth first search, but it has space that is. What's the space use? use? Hmm? It's exponential, you said. Is it exponential? No, it's only linear, because we're just keeping going down and up, right? We're not storing anything on that left. We're not storing, when this graph, when we did that, we're not storing anything. We're just throwing it all away. We're just recomputing it. So it becomes linear. Whoops. 
That's linear for the space is linear. What happens if there's no path to a goal? Hmm? It does the same thing as breadth first search. In fact, it lasts a lot longer than breadth first search because breadth first search typically runs out of space. But this doesn't, this uses, right, this uses less, much less space. So now, <clears throat> but now we have this nice algorithm that can now use less space. But it's still might, but it's still going to be the basis for algorithms to complete. And you of course the thing you think is surely recomputing paths is wasteful. And we'll actually show next time that it's not wasteful at all. You can actually do it with not a lot more time. Basically, because exponent because all these exponential time things, exponential is really bad. If you get a few overheads of searching higher up in the tree more often, it doesn't make much difference. Okay. So let's stop there and we'll get back to this next time. <laughs>